Right, hello and welcome to the Geek Lab. And for this video, we are going to be reviewing something that until this company got in touch with me and said, would you like one of these free for review? And I said, uh, yes, I'd never heard of one of these. This is a mini smart projector. Basically, it boils down to, it's an Android box built into a projector and it's tiny. And I have a thing for projectors. I've got 16 millimeter projectors and digital projector. Now the digital projector, I am going to say is a big one. And this tiny little thing blows it out of the water. I'm not just saying that because they sent it me for free. You will see uh, in a short while, the performance difference between this tiny, tiny, tiny LED base thing and that huge thing. So. First of all, let's crack this open and have a look. What we got? Uh, first of all, the box does that slow thing and sucks air in and open it is. Put the lid to one side and we can see inside the projector itself, which is wrapped in these, this lovely material of that sort of plastic. We'll be back to this in a moment. Inside, we get three boxes. One, two, three. And little holes. To allow you to pull them out, isn't that nice? In the first one, boink. We have nothing too interesting, just the power supply. Obviously, it doesn't come unwrapped. I've been uh, testing this out, so there it is. Just a power supply, nothing too interesting. Put that to one side. In the camera. Uh, in the second box, we have boink. Didn't come ripped. It's just because I've been using it. Uh, HDMI lead, they're handy. This does HDMI out TTV, so you can just use it as a smart box, as a Android box, and turn your TV into a smart box, basically. Smart box, smart TV. Also, we have the tripod. Now, I've seen this in other reviews, and they did have little plasticky ones, which were terrible. This is metal, it's much more stable, but, well, You'll see in a moment why I'd recommend replacing this. But let's, uh, that's it for that second box. Let's have a look in the third box, which doesn't go to a hole. Uh, this one contains the remote control, which is infrared, uh, on earlier models, uh, it was just a generic one. It looked like an off the shelf one, but now they've got this uh, one that they've got their own logo and stuff on, and much better. And also in here is a little infrared receiver, which must go into the on the USB ports on the projector before you can use it. Also, last thing in the box, which for some reason has a 3D dinosaur on the front. This is not a 3D projector, so don't know why, but there we go. And uh, this gives you all your instructions. I'm not going to sit here and go through them all, but it is a useful little guide and it's written really well, loads of pictures to show you how you're going. So, so far, so good. Let's have a look at the projector itself. Okay, and here it is, and you can see, it's just slightly larger than my palm. It's about the same size as a modern smartphone. And on the top, got the logo, it's in, the, it's in this uh, sort of textured white plastic. So it's not shiny, it's not going to uh, scratch easily and look a mess. But on the top, we've got uh, controls, we've got an OK button, uh, cursor buttons to allow you to move around the menu. Uh, we've got a return key, uh, menu button, and power button for switching on and off. Obviously. Uh, on this side, we've got, this is a focusing button. Uh, most of the time it does remain perfectly in focus, but this will allow you to tweak it a little bit. The main power button, which I've left on, <laughs> TF, uh, which will take your SD cards. I've got a uh, 32 gig in there at the moment. Uh, warranty sticker there. Uh, this, uh, just those status lights, there's a blue light uh, for when it's on, and a red light for when it's off and charging, stuff like that. Two USB ports on this one, DC in headphone jack and HD which is HDMI slot on the bottom 
we've got cooling vent. Now it shows two speakers here, but I believe only one of these is active. But with these, as you'll see in a moment, it's not about using the internal speaker. You either use this port to send it to the sound to some external source, or you can use Bluetooth uh, system, which is what I use. Under the bottom, it says smart ports, portable projectors, 1080p Ultra HD. Ultra HD, duh, it's not really. Uh, Ultra HD is 4K. This is not. Uh, smart portable projector, T88, 8 gigabytes of internal memory. Uh, obviously expandable through that slot. Uh, the one limitation with this particular model is this. <coughs> is that the HDMI is out only. So you can't plug uh, like a games console directly into this thing. It will not do that. Uh, at the front, we've got an exhaust vent for the fan. You can actually see the fan inside there. And the lens. And it's quite amazing. This is advertised at 50 lumens, but it is bright. And you'll see some pictures and uses of it in a short while. So that is the projector itself. Uh, it runs, it can run on batteries, it's got internal batteries and it will run for about three hours while streaming on that battery. Let's have a look first of all at it on its own tripod. Right here it is on the tripod that comes with it. It sits very heavily front so for this little tripod there's a lot of weight to the back. It's not so much of an issue when it's uh, on a tripod at this length, but when the legs are in the up position, uh, there's not too much strength to the central gimbal. So this is, there we go, very easily disturbed. And this is full, fully tightened. So I recommend getting, there you go, <laughs> it's been a pain. And if you put this on a wooden surface, it becomes practically unusable. So I recommend just getting a normal tripod. Uh, it will make life so much better. Let's go and see this in use. Right, we are now upstairs and you can actually see it running with the, ooh, <laughs> the light out the front there. So what I'm going to do is turn this onto the screen and show you the boot sequence and how long it takes to boot. I'm going to do this in full normal light uh, so you can see exactly how bright this screen is. Right, here you are, an exclusive in the RGVX bedroom. And there's a, there's a door for scale. And you're going to boot this thing up, normal light, so you can see how bright it is. And I'm pressing the power button now. We've already uh, pushed the slidey power button, and that's just the one on the top I'm pressing. And it will start to boot. And there it is, that's the, uh, the boot screen. And you can see how bright this is, even with a normal bulb like that one. So, it advertises 50 lumens, and as you can see, it's rather bright. But what I'm going to do now is switch the lights out uh, so you can see it fully. And you can see me for scale. Right, let's do this. Okay, so. Here we have the interface, which is a skin, obviously, on an Android box. You can use the remote control to control this, but as it's US, got USB, you can just plug a USB keyboard and mouse in, and life becomes much simpler. Uh, start at the top left. Uh, we've got Kodi, which is a video streaming service. Uh, most people know about it, so I'm not going to go into depth on that one. Next to that, we have the apps. Click that, quick use in, and you can see it's got all sorts. It's got AirPlay for streaming from iPhone, etc. An installer, browser, calendar, the usual stuff that you find on an Android box, even on many uh, phones. Uh, you've got eShare Server, which I'll talk about in a moment because you can control this from directly from your mobile phone, and the controls are quite brilliant on that. I prefer to use that to the menus on the screen here. But we'll go to that in a moment. So you got <coughs> all the usual stuff, including settings. Well, I'll quickly look through the settings. 
Just for reference at the moment it's running on a battery, you can run it on power obviously, uh, but the fan speed just go up very slightly. Oh annoying though. Uh, so we've got Google settings there. All the usual stuff. Uh, I've not found a way to hang on, might be a escape button on the keyboard. Yes it is. Right. I've got Hulu, Cody, Cody Update, Google Maps, Netflix, uh, which we've got, Play Store, all these sort of things. Video. Uh, right, if I go into YouTube, now, <clears throat> we did have a problem with this initially, uh, it has to put the latest Google software on, so uh, you have to sign into Google, but we couldn't get Google Play to sign in, <clears throat> so what we ended up doing is going to the browser, signing in there, and then it would let us sign in here finally, I don't know why that is, but such as life. So we can use this to find our subscriptions. You see it goes nice and fast. Limited obviously by the speed of our program. Right, so if I go to, uh, oh you see what I've been searching. If I just go to That guy there, you might know him. There he is. And um, just look at my Retro Rumbles video. See, it runs nice and fast. And you can also hear that the speaker is what you might call limited. But, yeah, you can uh, Bluetooth that to speaker, headphones, which is what I use, or it's got the audio out, so you can just plug it in to a uh, plug it in to an audio system. And as you can see, we've got this fancy guy on the screen, which is very handy. So <clears throat> that's YouTube streaming and running on here. You got all the usual apps as well, and. Uh, Right, you can go away now. We'll get to the menu. Uh, Explorer here, which will allow you, which will allow you to look on the storage systems you've got, including things like network drives. So if we quickly look here, we've got Bolt. You choose your player, and I'll resume playing because we're looking at it over here. Just run this very quickly. There you go, as your movie playing. Very good contrast, very good definition, 1080p, and uh, very nice. So that is impressive by anybody's standards. Uh, I've got some pictures, a quick video here of it running in a seminar room, uh, showing you how large it is. This is taken by hand, so it's a bit rough. Here you go, in the lecture theatre. There's a tiny projector, and there's this image on the screen. It's rather impressive, I must say. Plenty bright enough. Massive picture. Obviously not set up right there. There you go, that's in a bloody big lecture theatre. There's the big one up there. <laughs> yes, tiny little thing. That big image over there. It's going over the edges of the screen. Well, there you go. It's incredible. And here is just a quick picture of it shining off the side of a building. So we can see it's uh, extremely bright. So uh, let's have a quick look. Calendar, you've got this booster which will, if for some reason it's lagging, it will uh, clear all the processes, which is nice. Cody Update, Google Play, online videos, social apps. Uh, you've got a browser, which is just your standard stuff. Goes to Google, there you go. Normal stuff, no problem. And obviously using the HDMI, you can actually just plug this into your computer with the keyboard and mouse and use it as a normal system. And there's all your usual settings. No surprises there. Uh, Bluetooth, Ethernet, data usage, USB, sound, display, storage. Uh, with the display, this particular one does not have uh, auto keystone. If you want that... Uh, you have to go to the, to the model above, which is another £25, uh, but that comes with auto keystone in and HDMI in, so you can plug that into 
uh, your consoles into that. And online video, which is just a collection of the video apps. But as we've seen already, they work fine and it's very bright. Uh, it is actually at full brightness, I believe. Let's just have a quick look. Display, oh, no, nope. display. Uh, you've got all these different options. Let's have a good brightness. Yeah, brightness is up. Uh, you can change the RGB and the projection model allows you to uh, use it in different situations. So if you've got hanging on the ceiling, it will go upside down, but it will automatically adjust itself anyway if you turn it upside down. So there you go. So it's much easier than that in reality. And all your usual, there we go, 55 minutes so far running on the battery. Don't know what the current percentage is. Let's have a look if that tells me. You should get three hours out of it. No, it's not telling me. So let's have a look at uh, a very interesting aspect of this uh, the remote control using your phone. Right, first thing you need to do is go to the centre page of the manual and you'll find the link there to d.eastshare.tech and from there you can download the remote control software uh, which I'm about to show you. It will install this eShare software, there we go, which will connect to the uh, projector via the Wi-Fi. Uh, if they don't have a Wi-Fi connection in the area, it can connect directly to the Wi-Fi of the system. And you can use this to browse the system. It will also, uh, storage, something storage, this device by the following address, close, right. You can, you can also use this to transfer files between your phone and the uh, projector. All right, you've got the remote and this is the mouse and you can't see on the screen but that's actually got the mouse going around the screen. You've got a touchpad which allows you to move the screen left and right. You've got keys. Uh, which you know just will scroll up and down the menus things and you've got direct control of the app so you can just go in here and go straight to them without having to go through the menus there you've got a volume bar there we go uh, go home mouse uh, interesting thing keyboard there so you can uh, obviously put keys in change the sensitivity Another uh, interesting thing, which I find brilliant, is TV mirroring. This actually brings up the screen of the projector on your phone. And you can just use it as a normal touch screen. So if you want to go to Kodi Update, press that. If you want to go to you know, an online video service, double click. Uh, up they come. Resolution isn't as high, and this is actually repeating itself on the projector itself. Uh, and it will all work like that. It won't, if you're playing videos on the projector, those videos won't show on the phone, but they will show on the projector. No problem. Now, I can't show you here, but uh, if you press the mirroring button, that will actually bring your normal uh, phone screen up onto the projector, which is handy. And this last one is the camera. And what that does, everything that your camera sees on your phone will appear on the screen as you can see there. I see that's blind to that, but there we go. See? There we go. And you can actually see Ooh, the latency. Got some infinitism there. So that is very useful. So that's the Aodin Smart Projector. Uh, what do I think of it? Well, it's a wonderful little gadget. It's well built. Uh, well, last ages on the batteries. It's bright, got a nice short throw, so you get still a little large screen in a big, large screen in a small room. Uh, the only downside of this one is it doesn't have HDMI in or auto keystone correction. So if you want that one, uh, this one's £169. The model up, which has those facilities, is an extra £25. Ooh. But, if you want one, I've got the links below, and I've also got a coupon code below, which will get you 10% off this one. So, 
thank you very much to Aodin for sending this, and thank you very much for watching. If you enjoy videos like this, or retro computing videos, then please subscribe. Uh, you can also join us in our social media found below. And other than that, thanks very much for watching. You need to quit being dirty. You're a dirty boy. Ha <laughs>